Okay, so this uh, this afternoon or this evening, it's now. What's the time now? It's quarter to six in the evening in the UK. I am going to fly the next leg of my journey um, from coast to coast in America. We've come down the west coast, um, come across to Phoenix, and we're now going to go further north back up to Flagstaff. So the flight I'm about to do is from Phoenix Goodyear Airport to Flagstaff Pulliam Airport. We're going to fly the TBM 930. The only change I've made to the aircraft is I went into the ATC options and they gave it a tail number, a British tail, tail number basically, which would be Golf Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo. So all of the British tail numbers begin with Golf and end with four alphanumeric characters. So it's a bit odd that that aircraft would appear in America, but there we go. Um, flight conditions, I'm going to show all players, I'm going to show live traffic, and I'm going to have the live weather and time. So we'll get that going. And if, while it's doing that and getting ready, we will jump across and look in little nav map. So we're, I've started putting my, my coast to coast route into little nav map so we can see it easily. So let's make this a bit wider. Let's get rid of the elevation data because it's really of no use to us when we're doing this sort of plan. So I started off at San Jose, flew down to Salinas, flew across to uh, Meadows Field in Bakersfield. Then we flew down to Santa Monica, on the edge of Los Angeles. Then we flew across to Palm Springs. We left Palm Springs via Bermuda Dunes Airport and flew east across to um, Phoenix to the the Phoenix Goodyear General Aviation Airport. I'm trying to kind of avoid. We can just see the yellow aircraft appeared. That's the simulator waking up. I'm trying to avoid landing it or taking off from international airports. So I want to kind of stick to general aviation airports. So today we're going to fly from Phoenix Goodyear up to Flagstaff. I'm tempted to do a detour though. If you zoom in on the map, about 30 miles east of Flagstaff, there is Meteor Crater in Arizona. So I think we might, we might, might, might just fly over there. So when we leave here, what we can do on little nav map, for example, is go right click on that and we could measure the distance. And we could say, well, we know it's over there. Was it there or there? I can't. Oh, no, there it is. Sorry. So we need to go 23 degrees magnetic if we're going to go there. Yeah, 23 to 24 degrees magnetic. So I'll leave that on the map. Obviously, we won't see that in the simulator, but it just shows you can draw these things in Flight Simulator. So ready to fly. I'm sat on the tarmac. I've kind of cheated. I've let it spawn straight onto the runway so we don't have to do anything. It's beeping away at us, telling us the parking brake is on. It's telling us the inertial separators are on, so we'll turn those off. Auto cell. I can't remember what that means. We want this to be a nav source FMS mode, which is fine. Uh, we'll look up above, whoops, and we'll go and turn our lights on. Um, what else can we have a look at? We'll turn the autopilot is already on. We saw that we learned that on a previous video. We can see this is quite crafty when you assign a tail number in Flight Simulator 2020, it actually changes the paint job of the aircraft for you very nicely. So if we go and look outside, for example, we can see there's my tail number painted onto the aircraft now, which is very good. I don't think it paints it under the wings. Some of the aircraft, you get it painted on the wing as well. So let's go back inside. Scroll lock to bring up the air traffic control. That's interesting. Why do I not have air traffic control operational? Has it not tuned in for me? Hmm. 
This is a. I, you remember I said in a previous video, you learn something every time. So, scroll lock. So, I bet effectively they've already given me clearance to take off. That's why. So, I don't have to request anything. So, off the wheel brakes. Full throttle. And hopefully the ATC window will come to life once we're in the air. Let's sit up a little bit in the seat so we can see where we're going. And we're up. It's quite odd that it's almost been trimmed up. So gear up. Flaps up. Let's get a 10 degree climb. Let's get a couple of thousand feet and then we'll begin our turn to the right. Acknowledge. Goodyear Tower Dodger Golf. Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo continue for north departure. So let's begin our turn. When they say north departure on the air traffic control, they mean departure from the controlled airspace. So we're going to be exiting the controlled airspace to the north. So we're making our right hand turn. If we look, once we've turned, if we look out to the right, you should see all the, about to our three o'clock, two, two o'clock, sorry, position, you should see the city of Phoenix stretched out across the ground. So I'm just trimming the aircraft before I start playing with the autopilot. It's wickedly out of trim. It's trying to go up like crazy. Right, so... Is getting there. So yeah, stretched out across there is the city of Phoenix. And it's huge, big, sprawling city. This is still trying to turn. There we go. I'm just getting it set up. So heading. We want heading mode. Uh, turn the autopilot on. We'll put altitude hold mode on. We'll want it to cr climb to 8,000 feet. So we will acknowledge the frequency change. We want altitude to be about 8,500 feet based on the, the height that I know the destination is at. Because there's a, in the landscape on this route, the the altitude of the ground is going to raise significantly. I can show you on the map in a moment. So actually, you, you doing these flights, you get quite a good geography lesson. Uh, we want vertical speed to get to eight and a half thousand feet to be about fifteen hundred feet a minute. So there we go. I'll increase the throttle a bit to get there. Okay, so we can get rid of ATC for the moment. So if you remember, we also want to be travelling at about 23 on the heading to get to go and have a look at Meteor Crater. So we'll change this knob until it says 23. In fact, I'm going to go for 25 because I think by the time because we're slightly to the left of the track we should have been on by the time we get there. We need to be more like 25 degrees. OK, so we'll let the plane do its stuff. And let's go in and explain what's going on with the map. If we zoom out, we see the topographical map of there's this enormous plate of land to the northeast of us, which is much higher. You can see that on the relief shading. So there's our little aeroplane. We're leaving this area of the country. And as we go this way, there's a, a much higher plate of land. So this was obviously washed away millions of years ago 
which obviously gave rise to things like the Grand Canyon and some of the mountains. I guess glaciers did quite a lot of work with carving out the valleys. But yeah, this whole area that we now think of as, you know, the desert around that part of the country is much lower than up the top. Obviously where the water drained down through, that created a lot of the canyons that we know. And the various fissures that created dramatic rock formations. Obviously we get over towards some of the other mountain ranges on later flights. That's going to be interesting once we get over towards um, what would be a good entry point into these mountains. It's going to be a good one, isn't it? If we zoom in further, it kind of takes some of the relief away. Telluride, Durango, yeah, I think we'll worry about that another day. For today, we are flying over to have a look at Meteor Crater and then go and land at Flagstaff. Hopefully I have enough fuel to do both. So we are still climbing, eight and a half thousand feet. If we go and zoom in, I wonder what other aircraft there are around. So we're looking on a little nav map, we can see this one here. ASA-926, similar model to mine. Shall we increase speed? I'm just conscious that this is on 98% oh, on the torque. So I'm kind of pushing the engine. So we're climbing still, 160 knots and increasing. The coloured bar means our rate of change over several seconds. So again, the, the line that is drawn on this map is directly between the two airports. I haven't bothered putting a, a, any kind of technical flight plan in. We're passing something. Yeah, there's that plane. So that's the ASA 926. So he was appearing on my map inside the aircraft too. Something I've noticed about Microsoft Flight Simulator is it's using, um, oh, what's the word, high definition, no, um, there's a word isn't there for when you take a double exposure with one at a higher f-stop and one at a lower f-stop, HDR, high dynamic range. It does it with the simulator. If we look down, it corrects the contrast as if it was a normal camera lens and burns out the sky. And if we look outside, we see this correctly, and suddenly the cockpit becomes much darker. So it's correcting the, the meter, meet, light metering for where we're looking. I think that's quite clever. So when we look away, you can see everything's burnt out, but if we look over there, it's corrected. And obviously if we look at something bright, then all of the, the cockpit becomes quite dark. But if we look directly at it, it's kind of simulating your eyes, I guess the way they behave. The opening and closing your iris to let more, more or less light in. Um, so yeah, we've got really nothing to do for the next little while in the aeroplane. Um, Should we have an experiment with accelerating the rate of simulation? Or what, actually what we could do to make this a bit more fun, to show something else. There's a mode in Flight Simulator called um, SLU mode. And it's been in Flight Sim since the earliest days of Flight Simulator. In the modern version of it, Flight Simulator 2020, you press Y on the keyboard. So I'm going to do it now. So we're, we're steady on the autopilot. We're at 8,500 feet, so I'm going to press Y. We are now in slew mode. I can use the keys now on the keypad to move us quickly across the landscape. So I can hold number eight on. And it's going to basically fling us across the, the landscape at a terrific rate. So you can see this, what I was saying about that layer of land that's higher. 
we're crossing some of it now. And you can see where it was washed away to the lower level. So let's, we've done that for a little while, and let's go and have a look at little nav map. So we've already covered half the distance to Meteor Crater. And we are on the convergence line, about what I guessed, which is what, kind of 25 degrees. So let's do this a bit more. I'm going to press Y again to get to slew mode. Press 8. And then press Y again. And you will see the scenery up beneath us updating itself as it loads itself in. Um, so how are we doing? We are now about maybe 30 miles away from Meteor Crater. So let's do it again. Slew. I'm going to come off the slew again. So we're now 20 miles away from Meteor Crater. So with a little bit of luck, we should see it out in the distance soon. Tell you what, I'm being very impatient here. I'm going to press Y, go to slew again. Getting closer. Oh, we can see it now on the ground. So let's see if we can get some nice views of it from the outside view of the aircraft. Should we go a bit lower? We'll reduce speed. Yeah, let's go lower. So, altitude select. 7,500 feet. Vertical speed to get there. Fifteen hundred feet a minute. So we'll leave the autopilot running. It's a hell of an impact crater, isn't it? So let's come off the autopilot and we'll circle and move the camera as we go. slow down a little bit. Should we look at it from inside? quite a lot of turbulence which again this is the trick with flight sim where it gets things badly wrong with the turbulence it's a hot day there's no wind and it's saying it's going to be incredibly turbulent over meteor crater yeah great if you say so okay let's fly out towards flagstaff 
It's going to be this way, hopefully. So I'm going to put this on heading lock mode now, because obviously I've deviated massively, so I'm going to resynchronize my heading. And I'm going to turn the autopilot back on and let go of the controls. So it's going the direction I told it. It's climbing back towards 7,500 feet, doing it all on its own. So we need to be going, we can put a marker on little nav map, we can measure the distance from here over to Flagstaff, 267 degrees magnetic we want. So we'll turn the heading bug to 267. Which should be, it will get us in the neighbourhood and then we will obviously ask the tower for landing instructions and they'll put us into a pattern. And we can do the trick with showing the landing pattern on Little Nav Map and, and try and follow it. So you can do tricks <laughs> in a simulator that are impossible in real life, which is quite good fun. So we can see now we did our circle of the crater. We are flying back towards Flagstaff. Be there soon again we can accelerate time so i'm going to enter slew mode skid us across the ground really fast save us some time on the video and press y again so you can see we're coming up to hills so i need to increase my height so i'm going to go for 8500 feet vertical speed i want to go up that 1500 feet a minute for example. The only reason I go for 1500 is I know this plane can sustain 1500 feet a minute climb easily. It can probably do two and a half thousand feet a minute without much trouble as if I open the engines up. So what we can now do is go to ATC, go for the nearest airport list and we are going to look for Flagstaff Pulliam, it's top of the list, it's the closest airport. Tune to the tower we are going to request a full stop landing. Flagstaff Tower, Dr. Call. Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo is one one miles east with going back to land. Dr. Call. Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo Flagstaff Tower. Enter left, base, runway, 208. Altimeter, 29 decimal 9, E wind 24010. So, they want us to run left base, so we go right click on the airport in the terminal map, map, add the traffic pattern. Left, Runway 21. Go. Okay. So we will go 210 now. We acknowledge our pattern entry instructions. Fly left base runway 208 Dr. Bravo Echo Kilo. This will make more sense in a moment. So I'm going to fly along here, come in and enter the pattern for, for landing. We should also have, if you look, once you're in low altitude in these advanced aircraft, we've got radar altimeter, altimeter or altimeter if you're in Europe, of 1,400 feet, which is fine. So we will stay at this sort of height. We could probably do with another 1,000 feet, to be honest. So let's go for at least 9,500 and vertical speed to get there 1,500 feet again so in a moment we are going to fly towards the pattern. So I'm going to turn 90 degrees from my current course, which you can see an easy way of working these things out is to look on the compass, 90 degrees will be 300 degrees. So if I go 300 now, whoops, gone too far, the um, 
flight simulator is a bit of a so-and-so for accelerating the input as you carry on inputting. So we're turning the corner. So let's slow the aeroplane down now. We can watch ourselves on little nav map coming in. I'm going to drop flaps slightly. Put the gear down as well. So we're now only doing 100-ish knots. So our turn radius will be that much tighter. So we are going to turn for 30 degrees on our next turn. So it wants us actually to enter the pattern along here. So if we turn north, you can see the aircraft doing it. Now remember that was magnetic, so what looks like north on the screen is not true north. So let's go back to 350. So we're going to turn for 30 degrees. Yeah, magnetic and true north deviate by varying, di varying amounts all over the world, Qu sometimes quite significantly. So 30 degrees we're going to go for. If it will let me see it. So now we're on the downwind leg. We're holding at 90 knots. We've got the wheels down already. We can go and check that. Yep, three green lights. If we get rid of the yoke out of the way, we can also see... Oh yeah, I've got the flaps down already. So yeah, we can make the yoke know, reappear. So we are going to make a left. We will acknowledge our landing clearance. So we are going to turn left by 90 degrees. Again, we can use this trick of looking at the compass to know we are going to turn to 300 degrees. We have got a fuel imbalance warning as well because I haven't switched tanks. We're just watching that flash down there. It isn't too much of an imbalance, but it's still an imbalance. So I'm going to let this go past the radius because the radius is probably wrong. So let's go for 30 de uh, 300 degrees, sorry. Was it 330 or 300? I can't remember now. 300, wasn't it? Okay, so we're not perfect, but it's good enough. And then we are going to turn left again to 210 degrees. At which point we should see the runway. Again, we can get this out of the way for the moment and look left, and there's the runway right there. So we are really are just following the pattern for no good reason. <laughs> so should we do this by hand? So autopilot off now. We can look at little nav map. Hopefully the runway will appear. There it is. So we're a little, we turned a little bit too sharply. One of the problems in a simulator, when, if you haven't got a headset, is you can't look sideways easily and see if your rate of turn is correct to judge it for the, the runway. So we're just gliding in. We, we've got the wheels down, we have the flaps down. So we're coming into Flagstaff. So 
Seems to be a little bit of a crosswind, but nothing too drastic. So it's just a question of keeping it straight and watching the speed, watching the altitude just come off and we're going to try and touch down the right place on the runway. Let's sit us up in the seat a little bit so we can see what we're doing. on the centre line but good enough. Brakes. So I wonder where we go next. Let's exit the runway. We'll get told by air traffic control to do so anyway. So we'll press scroll lock. Knowledge ground handoff. One to one decimal nine or Docker Bravo Echo Kilo. Tune to ground. Request taxi to parking. Flagstaff ground Docker Golf. Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo taxi to parking. Docker Golf. Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo taxi to general aviation parking. Five packs away Alpha. Acknowledge taxi clearance. I'm taxi guessing this is Alpha over here because there's lots of other. Am I supposed to be parking in between those two, do you think? There's a guy stood there. That's too small a space. There we go. Job done. Ah. <sighs> Put the wheel brakes on, and now we can just cut the engines and and relax. <laughs> so there you go, another flight done, another part of the coast to coast done. I'm going to stop the video there.